Welcome to Cassis in Portugal. We're here to ride the new Triumph Street Scrambler. Cut to some cool drone shots of big waves and beaches and that. So when Triumph launched the Street Scrambler in 2017, I'm going to disregard the 865 from 2006 and all of the other Scramblers from the black and white days when Steve McQueen rode cool bikes on the cover of magazines. Ignore all those. Let's just talk about the modern version of the Scrambler. When they launched the 2017 version, it was probably the most surprised I've been by any bike for the last couple of years. I went expecting another retro thing. I did a genuine smile on camera. Those that know me personally know that smiling isn't really my thing. Cut to me now on the side of a hill in Spain, smiling at a bike that I've never ridden before. The Triumph has made some changes to the already very good Scrambler for 2019. So the brief was simple, improve the tech, improve performance, improve appeal. So let's talk about performance. How has Triumph improved the performance of this bike? From front to back, it's quite simple. The brakes, a little bit of a mute point across Street Cup, Street Twin and Scrambler previously have been improved, upgraded to a four piston Brembo caliper. Still only one disc, but it's a Brembo. Does a better job than the outgoing one. The forks have been upgraded as well. There's a cartridge kit in there now. If you don't understand cartridge kit technology, it's probably a little bit too much for me to waffle at you about in this video, but picture a couple of pistons, some shims, all working very well together, slowing down, speeding up the forks as they compress and do their thing just for you. Unadjustable at the top, don't expect to find little clickers, but they're just a better thing inside those forks now than they used to be. So this bike has three riding modes, rain, road, and off-road. The fact that it has off-road means A, you can actually try and ride it off-road, but the fact that it has off-road also allows you to turn the ABS off. Remember this legislation that's coming where all new bikes sold have to have ABS, well, the, the kind of sneak around the back door with that is if your bike is an off-road bike as well, then you can turn your ABS on and off. So you can control what the traction controller is doing on this bike and what the ABS is doing on this bike, as long as you're in off-road mode. So when we first got invited to this launch and on the way over when we were looking at the baseline spec of the new model, I thought it was quite simply a case of them just turning up the revs to give us that 14 or so increase in horsepower. There's actually quite a lot of work has gone into finding those improvements in power and maintaining the same efficiencies that it's always had. Remember, torque stays the same, 80 newton meters, but the spread is a lot wider. It's a lot easier to get at that torque. Power is up to 64 brake horsepower, 65 PS, whichever one you want to believe in. The improvements have been achieved by working on new cams, a new crank, lightweight crank, magnesium covers. They've increased the duration of valve lift on both exhaust and inlet cycles. They've worked really hard mechanically on the bike to make it more efficient and slightly more powerful. They've also upped the rev ceiling by 500 revs and remapped the thing to suit the changes that they've made. So from that 12 litre tank, you can expect a fuel return of about 68 miles to the gallon. If you've already watched the Street Twin review, you'll notice that there's a, it's a little bit lower at 60 than the Street Twin, that other bike that you can see at the back, that has about 74 miles to the gallon. Both claim figures from Triumph, by the way. The reason why Scrambler does 68 and not 70 odd is simply down to the flow of that exhaust and the fact that it's got a slightly larger front tire at 19 inches. Tiny little things like that equal extra miles to the gallon, believe it or not. Out the back, you'll find a pair of KYB shocks. They offer the same 120 mil of travel as the forks, but these are preload adjustable. This is the only suspension adjustment you can make to the entire bike. Triumph has also improved that scrambler style ergo, that feeling that you're on something big and wide and bouncy that's capable of going anywhere. That's me testing it out. The old bike had it and it was very good at doing it. Let's go and find out if the new bike has still got it. have seen a couple of cutaways of me riding the outgoing bike 
That was in the sunshine, that launch was bone dry. This one, the sun was out and the sky was blue, but for 24 hours before we got on the bikes, it absolutely hammered it down. Some of the roads that we were on were genuinely like glass. Comfort wise, this bike is pretty much perfect for me. I'm five foot 11, just on 14 stone. This is the bike for me. Quite wide bars, quite wide pegs, a big comfy seat. It's a cool place to sit and you look pretty cool when you're on it. So we bopped up the coast from our hotel base in Cassis. I think it's a pretty posh part of Portugal, I don't know. And basically spent the day annoying the locals. Sweet roads around here, whether they're dry or wet. Even the police came out at one point and shut the coast road down for us just to pose up and down and try and pull wheelies and do cool stuff next to these massive crashing waves and this beautiful sunset. So I'm gonna have my work cut out trying to find new ways of telling you how good this Scrambler is compared to the version that it's replacing. Both bikes are incredibly good at what they do. The bits that I like about this more is the simple fact that the brakes are better than they used to be and they're complemented by a fork set that is better than it used to be. Performance has increased because of those two things. When you add to that the fact that there's extra power and the torque is spread even wider across the rev range, which has now increased as well by 500 revs up to 7,500 revs, you just got this playful, intuitive, fun to ride bike. I guarantee even the most boring of bikers, even those of you that hate Triumph, you couldn't ride this bike and get off without smiling. So the producer has just asked me, why is that? Why does this bike make you feel as cool as you do? I'm not harboring any Steve McQueen intentions with this bike. It doesn't make me think that I'm somebody else. It just makes me feel like a really cool version of me. That's it, it just makes you smile. It's easy to ride, which makes you feel cool because you can boss this thing around. It makes a great sound, it's comfortable. It just seems to do everything that bikes in this sector need to be able to do. And at the top of that list is the one thing that maybe adventure bike fans and sports bike fans forget. People that are into these bikes, they wanna feel good, they wanna smile, they wanna look the part. They wanna look at themselves and their bike when they finish riding it and just feel pretty cool about it all. That's it. Both the Street Scrambler and the Street Twin come with identical five-speed transmissions. All the ratios, the final drive, everything is absolutely the same. Now, first to fourth, perfect. Most of my ride on these roads was second and third year. Touch of fourth, barely got into fifth all day. Fifth is like this leggy, old-school motorway cruising overdrive gear on these bikes. I really enjoyed the notion of riding this bike in just four gears. Save fifth for huge motorway sections of riding. And also, if you find yourself at Bonneville Speed Week or something like that and you need to do nine million miles an hour. That's what fifth gear feels like on both of these bikes. So you're in the market for a Triumph Street Scrambler. What else are you in the market for? Let's think about what the competition looks like for this bike. Now, it stands to reason that you would look at the Scrambler 1100 from Ducati. I think it also stands to reason that you would look at the Desert Sled from Ducati. Not necessarily the Scrambler base model, but certainly the Desert Sled, just because of those ergonomics. It's taller, it's chunkier, it's got more off-road intent than the base model Scrambler. And I think you would also naturally look at something from BMW. I'm not sure which of the R9T range, GS, Urban, adventure something something one of those i can tell you now they all cost a little bit more than the triumph and though they all make more power on paper than the triumph does a test ride on this will show you how good a job triumph has done of making the most of that 64 horsepower and every single one of those 80 newton meters of torque you'd be hard pushed to know that this bike only makes those numbers take a test ride see for yourself it made me feel ace it made me really love riding bikes again it's not often that you ride a bike in the wet and get off it with a great big smile on your face. You've been trying to do wheelies, you're dicking around for the camera, just smiling and having fun on bikes. If that's not what this is all about, we should pack up and all bugger off now. If you enjoyed this review, we hope you did. Leave a comment in the comment section below. Before you get to the comments, hit the subscribe button that you can see somewhere around here. There's a little bell as well, touch that and you'll get a notification every time we've got something new for you to watch. Yeah.